Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, we're looking at why spiders don't stick to their webs. Moths, beetles, and flies all get stuck in spiders' webs, but you almost never see a spider unable to extricate herself from one. But why not? Well, to begin with, when a spider makes an orb web, each line is actually comprised of at least two or more threads. And in fact, the supporting threads, radiating spokes and hubs, are all made from silk that is not sticky. On the other hand, the strands that comprise the net part of the web, those that usually trap unwary insects, are covered with glue. The fact that the spider is able to navigate these sticky threads as effectively as it does has to do with a couple of unique properties on her legs. First, an oily substance covers spiders' legs and helps them keep the glue from sticking to them. Pursuant to a study published in 2011 in the journal Naturalwissenschaften, arachnologists Eberhard and Braseno washed the legs of spiders and found that after they were clean, the legs were much more likely to adhere to sticky threads. In addition, Eberhard and Braseno also noted that the spider's gait seemed specially designed such that it, to quote, reduced the area of contact between the sticky droplets and the setae, these are spiny leg hairs. This, combines with the fact that the thread touched many, rather than only a few branching hairs, made it very unlikely that any glue would slide all the way down the hairs to make contact with the main part of the leg. If this had happened, permanent adherence would have been much more likely. Furthermore, the spider it has a unique way of grasping sticky thread, using a third claw that allows it to shake itself free from the glue. Specifically, as it walks along the sticky silk, the spider grasps the threads with its third claw and presses the silk into its spiny hairs, which are somewhat elastic and therefore bends back under the pressure. As the spider moves down the thread, it releases portions of it with its third claw, freeing the hairs, which then bound outwards, effectively flinging the sticky thread away from its leg. All this said, although rare, since most webs are designed to catch flying insects, not crawling ones, spiders will occasionally get caught in their competitors' webs. Even then, many times they are able to extricate themselves. However, some spiders are known to use their competitors' webs against them. Some of these belong to the genus Portia. The Portias prey on their cousins by pretending to be either a captured victim or a courting male of the same species. Able to jump in and out of a web, the Portia coordinates its leap onto the web with a breeze so that any vibrations cause caused by the jump are camouflaged by those caused by the winds. Portiers are even known to change their tactics depending on the species being hunted and will successfully kill and eat other aggressive spiders. And now for some bonus spider facts. The world's largest spider is the Goliath bird-eating tarantula, which can reach up to one foot in length. A resident of South America, this predator sneaks up on its victims, incapacitating them with venom from its one-inch-long fangs, and it in fact does not even need to weave a web. In addition to birds, this spider eats lizards, snakes, bats, and frogs. And since it has no molars, rather than chew its meals, the spider injects the victim with a juice that breaks down the tissues so that they can be slurped up. Although not fatal for humans, its bite will cause nausea, sweating, severe pain, and we're assuming never-ending nightmares about creepy crawlies. And now for another bonus fact. The biggest webs made by individual spiders are those of the Darwin's Bark Spider of Madagascar. The largest of these ever found was 80 feet long and spanned a river. The webs that these spiders make are made from one of the strongest biological materials known to man. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. I'd also like to take this moment to thank our patrons on Patreon. If you're interested in supporting us here at Today I Found Out, keeping this channel as ad-free as possible, please do consider heading over to patreon.com forward slash Today I Found Out. Every little helps, uh, whatever you can spare is always highly appreciated. And we do have some great perks in return. We've got posters, all sorts of, all sorts of great stuff. Just go over to patreon.com forward slash today I found out to learn more and as always thank you for watching so you're still here still watching this video maybe you just let it run and you're not actually there anymore whatever the case if you're listening to this I think you should go check out my new channel it's called biographics it is biographies of notable historic figures as well as present-day people let me give you some examples we got the Queen of England Vladimir Putin those just two people on the world stage. We've also got Elon Musk coming up, Arnold Schwarzenegger. We have even the first serial killer, H.H.H. H. Holmes? Maybe just H.H. H. Holmes. We look at all sorts of people, longer form, about 20 minutes long, diving into the story of their lives in a similar style to this. It's biographics. If you like this channel, if you like my other stuff, you're going to like this as well. Biographics, there is a link in the description below. Do go check it out and please do subscribe.